welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and I am painting again. Yay! <laughs> Why do you guys paint? Let me know in the comments what it is about painting that int intrigues you. Or maybe it's something that you, maybe you just watch painting. Maybe that's what intrigues you. Um, let me know in the comments what it is for you. Anyway, I'm painting another record. Uh, I've been kind of throwing around the question of what haven't I painted lately? How haven't I painted lately? And um, so when I come up with videos, I ask lots and lots of questions. So here we go. Here is a record again. Um, these, all the records that I use are from a record collector here in town who was going had a big box of records that he was going to take to the trash he was going to put them take them to the rubbish dump and um they're scratched they don't have covers they've got something seriously wrong with them or they're just really really bad <laughs> anyway he's gone through them he's checked whether they are expensive or valuable or anything so please don't worry about me i'm not painting on something that is hugely expensive what have I just done? I've just put a bit of tape across the hole to cover up that hole so that we don't get paint falling through. Um, if you've ever forgotten to do the paint hole, it makes a big puddle underneath. I tell you that much now. Now, keeping your painting up off the ground is really important with acrylic pouring. We have so much paint. Um, and if it falls off a you can't get your fingers underneath b your um painting gets stuck down there it gets all messy underneath it might get messy underneath anyway but that's just because i have fun <laughs> for me acrylic pouring is about having fun and sharing that with you guys and exploring and asking questions what else is possible how does it get better than that stuff like that so these are the tops of tubes of paint and I just keep them and I use them to put underneath my uh, records if I'm not using my Lazy Susan just to pick them up off the ground. So let's just check that you guys can still see me, see what's happening up there. Ta-da! <laughs> um, so today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using these two little utensils. Yes, it's a hair comb and probably should be wearing it to keep my hair back. But I am not. Uh, I have more of them somewhere. Maybe I should use one in my hair and one in my <laughs> painting. Um, then, And this is just a palette knife of some description. Well trashed. It's even like coming out of its wood. But it has a straight edge on it. And that's what I'm after today. Next up we have our white house paint. As you can see on the top it says spring. That is the brand of house paint I use. Um, it's the cheapest paint in New Zealand as far as I've found. It's like... Um, I think it's about $40 for a 10 litre pail. It's so cheap. Um... If you're in America, that is 10 litres is about three gallons, I think. No idea. Anyway, who cares? Not relevant. Um, so my acrylic paint, I mix with Floetrol and water. My house paint, I also throw in just a little bit of PVA glue. Somebody was like, what's this PBA that you're talking about? And I realized it's my accent. I didn't understand. P-V-A. <laughs> Polyvinyl acetate. Uh, you know, kids, white school glue that you make slime out of. And what I'm doing here is I'm just rolling the paint around the record. Yep, allow some of it to run off. Just, I just want to get the whole thing covered is really what I'm after. With 
as little wastage as possible. The more I have on the record and the less I have on the ground, the happier I am. Here we go. Fully covered. How's it get any better than that? If you just bang it down like that, it kind of pops some of the air bubbles. That's helpful. Put our lid back onto that. I mix them up in huge batches. Because, <laughs> as you can see, you use quite a bit. And this is what is sometimes called negative space or blank space or background paint or whatever you like. It's just really giving your, whatever you're painting on, a coat of paint, which can do a couple of different things with aeroplanes going overhead. Um, the first thing is to give you a base to start from. So that if suddenly you've got this much paint in there and you go, oh, that's so stunning. You can just go, I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs> um, the other reason you may choose to put this on is to create, um, as I've talked about in other videos, that slide factor. Um, if you don't want your colors to roll over on top of each other as they hit the dry, you've got wet paint already there and it's not going to roll out. One thing you've got to be aware of, though, is that your um, your white can come through. You will, you almost, I would put money, if I was a betting girl, I would put money on that somewhere in your painting that white is going to come through. So you've got to be aware of that and prepared for it. Now, <clears throat> in the previous video, I talked about how Silicon is not actually a necessary requirement for acrylic pouring. And I want to show you why. Um, this is... None of the paint I'm using today is going to have any silicon in it. Um, it does have Floetrol in it. And some people say that Floetrol creates cells. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be a judge on that. What I'm going to do though, oh, I do have a stick in there already, is I'm going to start off by just creating a line. Through the middle of, this is Prussian blue. When I first started using it, I was calling it Parisian Blue. But I got corrected quite a lot. Because it's not... It's Prussian. If you look at the way it's spelled, it actually looks like Russian, but with a P on the front. It's quite fun. Anyway, don't need to be too perfect with that. As you can see, it's a bit wobbly, bobbly, bobbly, boo. But I'm going to have some fun with it. Um, now, because this is a hair comb, it does have, actually, I'm not going to use that one. I'm going to use one of these. I'm going to use one of these. Again, a hair comb, but this is more for getting curls, like getting the knots out of curls. This one is for holding your hair back like that up to you now what i'm going to need for this is i'm going to need some paper towels for wiping my comb and i'm just going to take the comb and now the reason i've chosen to swap from this one to this one is this one's um Got them in a line, and the other one is bent. Now, see how I've been wiping my my comb 
so that when I go back down into the blue it's not putting the white in You don't need lots of colours, okay? If you think to do this sort of art, you need to have a huge collection of colours. No. Whoops! You do need a uh, <laughs> palette knife that stays in one piece. Ugh. That's put all sorts of bits in my paint. That's not cool. Okay, let's do it without a handle. Okay, so my cloth is getting dirty and I'm not actually being present with it and noticing when it's not cleaning. So see how I've got a whole heap of white in there. Now, as you can see, I'm getting little lacing. Now these are not silicon cells, these are lacing. Alright, it's where your colour is so thin across the top that it's it is springing apart now some of you have seen my copper bronze I think this is copper There's a truck in my driveway, dear Liza, dear Liza. There's a truck in my driveway, dear Liza, a truck. So I'm just taking that through and giving myself a nice little copper line. And I'm going to repeat the process that I just did, but alternating. So I've got those lines up there. Sorry about the beep beep beeping, if you can even hear it. So I'm just going to dip down into there and take the copper up. through there and then I'm gonna again make sure my palette knife is nice and clean I actually want a little bit more copper on this end here before I swipe and just pulling that up boys have been over in Tauranga pouring a floor today it's raining here but hopefully they got the floor all sorted before they maybe it's not even raining in Tauranga it's only 45 minutes away but 
oftentimes they have a completely different weather pattern because they're coastal. Here we go. So it's simple. It is not a um, difficult technique, but as you can see, it's quite effective. And it's got no silicon in it. All I've got is two colors of paint, plus some white and some pouring medium. Uh, as I say, I use Floetrol. I'm just gonna go over this with my butane torch. It's just a little flame. It's not gonna bring up any cells, but it will pop any air bubbles. And then the other thing I need to do is make sure we've actually got paint on all of it. And in some places I have scraped down to the to the record and I don't actually want to have record if I don't want it. And just there. That back a little bit. There we go. Let me get you down and show you what we've got. All right. So as you can see, it kind of if you just did it all one way, it could almost look like a um a seascape, like a reflection on water. But this is what I mean by lacing. As I said, there is no silicon in these. It's just the friction of the cut, thinly, thinly, thinly dragged paint. Um, and adding that extra texture with the comb is just something fun. You don't even need to do that. I've got videos where I've just done swipes. Some people will pour their two colors all together and then do the swiping and dragging. So totally up to you. So this is a really simple yet effective one. If you just want to do something as a decoration for your wall, you don't want to get into all this fan tangled testings and stuff that so many people do. But do remember to wipe off your things. It's really important. So I'm going to let this dry and come back to you and show you uh, in just a few seconds your time, a couple of days my time, show you the end result. This is this is where I dropped the thing. And show you the end result. So are you ready for this? In three, two, one. Ta-da! It dried. Looking exactly the same as when it was wet. <laughs> For those of you that have problems with your paintings sliding off the canvas um, while it's driving, drying, two hints for that is one, your paint might be a little bit too runny and two, make sure it's on a flat surface. Um, I really like this. Check it out. It's so fun. In the past when I've done these, I've tried to make the top and the bottom sort of balance out so it looked like a skyscraper reflecting in a, um, a river. But having them offset like this, I really like that. It kind of creates a totally different look. Which way would you have it? If you had it that way and you're talking about it being in the water that could just be where a boat just went through and ruined it <laughs> it's not ruined i think it adds to it totally different point of view where have you been trying to be perfect instead of enjoying what you've created
What else is possible? Ah, oh, I like this. I like it a lot. Let me know in the comments, do you like it? Have you tried this sort of thing? If so, did you put the colours through separately? Or did you just put all the colours down and then smear it out? What did you do? Let me know in the comments. Um, and for those of you that didn't know, um, I started a Facebook group called Acrylic Pouring for Fun. It's been going for a while now and we've got over 40,000 subscribers in there. Or 40,000 members. And everyone gets to share their acrylic pouring stuff. Um, ask questions. There's a lot of information in there. Please, please, please check the other posts. There's a search button on Facebook groups. Um, search for resin tips or resin. Or if you're wanting to put resin on the top. There's so much information. And some people get a bit snarky if you ask questions that have been asked 10,000 times before. Um, so please, please, please come play with us. Come join the group. Um, we have a group of us who work hard at keeping it fun and light and joyful and no judgmental bleh. Um, and we also, you know, if you want to share, if you've got a YouTube channel and you want to share your videos, that's great. But please share as a photo and then the link to the video in the description. And you'll see even I do my videos that way. So, you know, please, please, please honor it. There's no promotion or spamming or anything allowed in the group. And just posting your video um, without photos is considered promotion. Um... Anyway, come join us in that group. Come share your photos. Um, tag me if you've been using um, a, if you use an, a video, a, a technique you borrowing from one of my videos. I'd love to see it. Please, please, please. Hey, Michelle, Ed House. Um, you know, this is from your video. Go ahead and, and please, please, please tag me. I would love to see them. So I look forward to seeing you guys in that group. If you are not on Facebook, you're more than welcome to contact me via my website. If you want to come on live on my live stream next week, make sure that you sign up on my newsletter. Literally, it's just stuff to do with my channel. It's not a promotion place. And if you are wanting to look for digital prints of anything that I've created, they're on my website as well. If you're interested in buying this piece or any other piece, contact me. You know, all those self promoting things I'm trying to practice promoting. But please, 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 hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please, I'm so close to 50,000. I'm so excited. And um, what else is possible? How does it get better than this? And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!